Hello everyone and welcome back. So far in this section we have covered family Fabaceae and family Solanaceae. Both these family belong to Dicotyledons and now we are moving to next family which is Liliaceae and Liliaceae belongs to Monocotyledons. But in Monocotyledons there are some other important families. For example family Poaceae is there. In Poaceae there are many important staple foods. For example, wheat is there, maize is there, and rice is also there. And next to Poeshi is another family that is Orchidaceae. Many strange flowers, many beautiful flowers belong to family Orchidaceae. The strange flowers with the unique characters, bizarre characters, and many other amazing structures are there. But NCRT opted for Liliaceae for certain reasons. Firstly, there are many ornamental flowers, ornamental plants. Although there are many beautiful ornamental plants and many useful plants are there in family Liliaceae. But we are going to focus only on those plants which are mentioned there in NCRT. So in NCRT, there are two ornamental plants. One is tulip and second is Gloriosa, the flame lily. There is one vegetable plant that is asparagus, one medicinal plant and that is aloe vera, and other plant which is also a medicinal plant but in NCRT it is mentioned with a specific medicine that is colchicin. So colchicum autumnale. So these are the example in NCRT and last but not the least is Alium sepa, onion. Onion is discussed in detail because the diagram of inflorescence is of onion and the floral diagram, floral formula all belongs to onion. Liliaceae or lily family is a characteristic representative of monocotyledonous plants. In vegetative characters, perennial herbs is mentioned there. Perennial word describes the lifespan. Plants are of three types on the basis of their lifespan. A plant can be annual if it completes its life cycle within one season or one year. Biennial plants require two years to complete their life cycle and perennial are long living plants. So why it's mentioned perennial herbs? Because in most cases perennial plants are not herbs, they are mostly trees and herbs are not perennial usually. Herbs are just annuals. So what makes these herbs perennial is perinating structures like underground bulbs, combs and rhizome. Leaves. Leaves are mostly basal that they arise from base of stem. Alternate, alternate is describing the phyllotaxy. In alternate phyllotaxy single leaf arises from one node. In alternate, one leaf arises on the right side and one leaf will arise from the next node on the left side and so on. Linear describes the shape. This is linear leaf. X stipulate that the leaf is without stipule and parallel venation. It is axiomatic that in case of monocotyledons, the venation is parallel Floral characters, inflorescence, inflorescence is arrangement of flowers on floral axis. Solitary, that there is only one flower and this flower is on the tip. Cymose, in cymose tip stop its growth and the growth is taken by lateral branches that is cymose. Next is often umbellate cluster. Firstly it is umbellate not umbel. This structure is humble but it is present in family Apiaceae. Here in Liliaceae, the inflorescence is umbellate, umbel like but not umbel, umbel cluster and this structure can be observed in onion. This is umbellate cluster. This apparent umbel is formed by aggregation of many monochasial cymes with many scaly outgrowth. Mostly it is surrounded by one or three large membranous brackets. 
flowers are bisexual it is a bit easy to remember that in ncert all families are with bisexual flower that male and female organs are there in single flower flowers are actinomorphic it is also very simple to remember actinomorphic means radial symmetry except fabaceae where flowers are zygomorphic all other flowers which are mentioned in ncert are actinomorphic perianth talking about the flowers or families mentioned in ncert by and large we are dealing with corolla and calyx means petals and sepals now we are going to discuss perianth mostly in flowers there are two distinct worlds first sepals green colored worlds and collectively known as calyx second petals colored worlds collectively known as corolla but here in liliaceae the structure is not differentiated into two different types single type of leaves are there and these leaves are known as tepals and the collectively tepals are known as perianth so tepals are 3 plus 3 6 often united into a tube sometime with velvet aestivation we studied aestivation for the case of corolla or petals and same theory can be applied on tepals or perianth androecium stamens 6 3 plus 3 epi tepalus epi means upon and tepalus means tepals that stamens are attached on tepals this condition is also known as epiphyllous if stamens are epipetalous means they are attached on petals but if they are attached on tepals they are known as epitepalous or epiphyllous this condition is described in floral formula by drawing an arc from p to a means attaching perianth or tepals to androecium or stamens so stamens are attached to perianth or tepals gynoecium tricarpellary means three carpels are there syncarpus syncarpus means attached carpels these three carpels are attached to each other superior ovary the flower is hypogynous arising below the ovary if floral parts sepals petals or tepals or other floral parts are arising from below the ovary it means ovary is superior and flower is inferior or hypogynous trilocular tricarpellary syncarpus three carpels are attached and these carpels are forming three chambers the condition is known as trilocular with many ovules axil placentation details of placentation will be covered in a different section uh, we can just have little bit idea of axil placentation axil placentation can be easily understood by the axil of wheel this is a wheel this particular structure is axle and this structure can represent the ts of trilocular ovary and at this position ovules are present fruit is capsule or rarely berry fruit will be discussed in a different section seeds endospermous means seeds are with endosperm floral formula as we discussed in last video of solanaceae that if we know the structure we can deduce the formula if we know the formula we can create a floral diagram from it so in floral formula first br means flower is with bract next sign is sign of symmetry that is actinomorphic and next to that is the sexual condition of flower it is bisexual as male and female sign is there and then there is p representing the perianth or tepals 3 plus 3 three tepals on outside and three on inside and next is androecium 3 plus 3 as androecium stamens are attached to tepals 
so they are of same pattern 3 plus 3 tepals and 3 plus 3 stamens gynoecium g ovary 3 tricarpillary enclosed in brackets brackets represent fusion that condition is syncarpus ovary is superior which is generally represented with drawing a line below the number so this was all about its theoretical description now we are moving towards practical to describe family deliaceae ncrt has taken the example of helium cetal algae but we have an other flower available here so this flower is rain lily this structure under my thumb is bracket bracket protects the flower when it is young and this forms first part of our formula So plant is very clearly herbaceous plant and now we are digging it to observe the structure known as bulb. So this structure is known as bulb and roots arising from the base of stem are also very clear. These are roots. It is very clear that this symmetry is actinomorphic or radial symmetry. Now observing the tapers. First internal tapel, second internal tapel, and third internal tapel, forming first three, then plus three. First external, second external, and third external. So three external and three internal tapels are very clearly visible here. And now the androsium and gynosium stamens are visible here and this is stigma. Light yellow colored stigma is visible. Stigma style and ovary part of gynosium. Now there is one particular difference between onion the example given in NCRT that in onion the tepals are fused together and this is represented in this formula by these brackets gametopolis condition but in our specimen that we are dissecting now the tepals are free so if we have to write floral formula for this particular fl uh, flower so we have to remove the brackets next thing this particular condition the arc connecting p to a and androsium to perianth this arc represent the attachment of stamens to tepals. The condition is known as epitepalus or epiphyllus. So here it is very clear that this stamen is attached to this tepal. Again, condition is epitepalus or epiphyllus and in formula it is represented by this arc. So simply if we have three tepals, three plus three and on each tepal there is one stamen. So same number of stamen. That's why the formula is A three plus three. So we are done with tepals, perianth and androsium stamens and now we are moving towards gynosium. So in gynosium the structure stigma, style and ovary. Stigma is visible, light yellow color and the style is its long stalk and now we are going to dissect the ovary. So we are cutting a longitudinal section.
so here in this structure two chambers are visible but there are three chambers in ls only two chambers are visible Ovules in the structure are also very clear. We will try to get some ovules out. So these are the ovules present in ovary. Ovary will transform into fruit and ovules will form the seeds. Now we are going to cut the TS ovary. Now the last part of floral formula G3 in bracket. So firstly G gynosium 3 means tricarpillary. Tricarpillary condition is very clear and in bracket it means tricarpillary syncarpus and the trilocular condition three chambers are also clearly visible so this is all about family liliaceae we are done with our floral diagram floral formula and the dissection of lar thank you thanks a lot please share and subscribe for more videos